Before the video really starts, I just wanted to say that this entire mission was live streamed on my Twitch channel. If you want to get a glimpse of future videos, I highly recommend following me so you'll be notified when I stream again. The link is in the description. Hello everyone, it's uh, been a while. This is perhaps the most excited I've been about a video, and that's because this has been a long time in the making. If you want to skip the story, jump to this timecode. If you want to go straight to the launch, then jump to this timecode, or watch the music version, which I uploaded at the same time. I started with plans for a real solar system grand tour very shortly after uploading my Jupiter 4 Infinity video, and I also got inspiration from Jacob's extended grand tour, which heavily influenced the craft design. Then I made this, a spreadsheet for ion engine landers which gives me the delta V I get on one charge of the batteries and the TWR I get from the ion engines. Afterwards, I went to the tracking station and painstakingly copied the masses and radii of each of the bodies I wanted to land on. With that, I computed the gravitational force with the formula gm over r squared, and out of that, got the TWR of the lander on each of the bodies. Delta V to orbit was taken from the delta V map of the solar system, which you can also find in the description. All the bodies with enough TWR and margins were chosen for the ion lander. Everything else was built, Everything was tested, and then, a few weeks later, I started a grand tour with a burst of two streams. These two streams were the source for my highlight videos. Later, in December of 2019, I did a massive 24-hour stream where I knocked out every single remaining landing. The one landing left was Venus, which I had landed on previously, but wanted to do again. I'll get to the specific reason why later. For about a year, I procrastinated, I made other projects, and only later got the motivation to actually do this. And this time, I finished everything. So, in this video, I'll land Jebediah Kerman on every single body in the solar system with a surface to land on, and return him safely back to Earth. With that said, let's talk about the three launches of this mission, and what each of them comprise. In the first drafts of the mission, it was meant to be completed in two launches. First, we dedicated Venus Lander, and then we finished Craft. But afterwards, I launched another lander, which brought the total launch count up to three. This is the dedicated Venus Lander, which, as you can see, is heavily inspired by McCullough's design for their Venus Lander. The main reason why I launched another one after this is because this one specifically relies on an exploit with the procedural solid rocket boosters. These boosters have the same specific impulse at any pressure above one atmosphere, so it doesn't matter if you're at sea level on Earth, Venus, or even Jupiter. These boosters will have the same thrust unlike any other engines which have a thrust of zero at Venus's sea level. This property, as you may be able to tell, makes them extremely overpowered for this purpose. The second ship is the main one, so let's take a look at its components. At the top, we have the escape tower, which also serves as the Earth Return craft, again heavily inspired by Mokalo. This would later come back to bite me, but I'll get to that on the return. Underneath that, beneath the decoupler, is the dedicated lander for Titan, which has its own ion tug and a special return module. Then, beneath a long pole of liquid fuel tanks, we have the main fuel module, to which two other modules are attached, the dedicated lander for Mars on one side, and the main ion lander plus tug on the other. This main ion lander will land everywhere except for Mercury, Venus, the Moon, Mars, the four moons of Jupiter, Titan, and Triton. For most of these, we use a lander powered by liquid fuel, which also has its own tug and some fuel reserves for Jupiter. The third ship is the other dedicated Venus lander, which uses the braking ground props, making the ascent possible without any exploits. Several hours were spent just testing this craft alone. With all that said, let's get to the mission at hand. The mission starts with the dedicated Venus lander taking off from Cape Canaveral and going into Earth orbit. The reason for this order of launches is so that I can return into the lunar plane and then launch the main ship into this plane for easier transfers. Once in orbit, we start up our massively reskilled ion engines and burn out of the Earth's SOI. This would take an extremely long time if it wasn't for the persistent thrust mod, which I used to condense these multi-hour transfers into just a few minutes. Another mod which greatly simplified the transfers was MechJab, 
as I could easily use its maneuver planner to get good encounters going. As such, the only big problem with the arrival at Venus was the capture, which was a problem in general when capturing at high relative velocities, as my ship would veer off the retrograde vector very quickly. Once we do get into orbit, we transfer fuel into the return module and put that into an elliptical Venus orbit while the main ship descends into the atmosphere. Here, I made a big mistake and decoupled the xenon tank way too late, which caused it to get gripped by Venus's atmosphere and exert a torque on the craft from behind, making one of the nose cones on the booster enter the airstream, overheat, and explode. I had thought that this might happen, but the lander was only rated safe to return to orbit when either zero or two nose cones were gone. In this instance, it was just one, and that made the ship aerodynamically unstable. As such, I was unsure if the ship would actually make it back into orbit. But regardless, I continued the lengthy descent down to Venus's surface, after which I planted the first flag of the mission. Ascent from Venus involves ditching the heat shield at the top, followed by removing the four pillars of solid rocket boosters which acted as girders, and blasting off the surface. After detaching the first set of boosters, the one exploded nose cone became a big problem, and started to tilt the craft quite heavily, despite Smart ASS doing its best to hold my orientation, and by the time I detached the two boosters, I was already tilted 45 degrees from vertical. Upon detachment, fortunately nothing on the main craft broke, but the craft overcorrected when going back to vertical, and I had to swing around multiple times to stabilize itself. Luckily, the atmosphere of Venus was still dense enough at this altitude, but this was not a large problem, and I still had enough delta-v to be able to get into a stable orbit. The return module and rendezvoused with the craft, and Jeb got back in and went for a transfer back to Earth. The return occurred without too much drama, and after some time, I was in a low orbit around the Earth, inclined almost exactly with the Moon. So afterwards, I waited for the craft to pass over Cape Canaveral, where I launched the second craft and slowly moved it into a rendezvous with the return stage. Now at this point, Jeb got into the liquid fuel lander and started to plot for a transfer to Mercury. The reason why I did this is because I wanted to get the difficult landings out of the way first, and in testing, the Mercury tug only had barely enough delta V to actually complete this mission. This transfer was one of the only ones where the transfer burn was split into more than one maneuver, with one first matching planes with Mercury and lowering our orbit, and then another to reduce relative velocity further before the final capture. From there, it was a long way down into a low orbit, as I still hadn't fully mastered the art of doing that with such a low TWR. After the landing, another problem which arose was that the tug didn't have a reaction wheel, and as such, I had to partially cheat by toggling persistent rotation on and off to get everything into the right orientation. Return to Earth was fairly standard, but it did require me to aerobrick since the delta V of the craft was getting really low. From there, a user in Twitch chat asked me to go to Titan, and I happily obliged. The Titan craft decoupled from the main ship and started a very slow burn out of the Earth's sphere of influence. Halfway through this burn, the first batch of drop tanks got empty so I detached them and went on. Having gotten into an orbit of the Sun, I plotted a Jupiter gravity assist to take me to Saturn, but halfway through the burn I encountered an issue which would cause my craft to spontaneously overheat and explode. I later found out that it was due to the second set of drop tanks emptying and persistent thrust not having any more fuel to continue burning the ion engine, so I made sure to drop the time warp factor as this happened so that my ship wouldn't explode. From there, it was fairly smooth sailing into a Titan orbit, where I discovered another problem on the descent. The Titan craft was mounted directly underneath the escape tower by a decoupler, which was right above an inflatable heat shield, which is how I wanted to keep myself stable during atmospheric entry. Turns out, while I could inflate this heat shield in the VAB, I wasn't able to do so in flight. I resorted to using the deorbit engines to stabilize myself while having Smart ASS constantly correct my craft's controls to keep myself dead center on retrograde. This ended up working, even though I had some slight issues with detaching the shield as the deorbit engines were mounted on it. Ascent from Titan was extremely straightforward, as I found out that I had over-engineered the ship by quite a lot, so I could go directly from the surface into a rendezvous with the return craft. The return to Earth also went by very well, 
Mainmast, and I settled into the main ship and entered the first stream. In the second stream, I decided to finish almost all the landings with the liquid fuel lander and go to the moon and the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. The first transfer to the moon was accomplished very quickly, as I could simply set the craft outside of the lunar SOI and have a main lander do the rest of the work in landing itself and getting back to the ship. On Jupiter, I tried numerous times to capture into orbit of Io, to then eventually realize that I can simply put myself on the rendezvous with Io, land there separately while the other craft is on escape trajectory, and then have the lander rendezvous with the main craft. This ended up working on all the moons, but the margins in the lander did get very tight sometimes. However, everything worked out well, and we were ready to return to Earth, which once again required aerobraking passes. Once back at the ship, I decided to go to Mars next to use that dedicated lander. The transfer went through without too much trouble, but the margins on the dedicated lander were really tight, and I had to reload multiple times such that I wouldn't run out of fuel, on the descent or on the ascent. At this point, I stopped the stream, having done six more landings. All but one of the next landings were part of the 24-hour stream I did at the end of 2019. Quick disclaimer. Because I was switching streaming software at the time, I did not know that I had only configured the stream to run at 720p, and since I didn't record anything on my end, that is the best footage out there. The ascent from Mars was not too problematic. However, I had made the mistake of not watching my relative inclination until it was way too late, so I had to use Jeff's EVA pack to continue circularization in Rendezvous. Mars's moons were extremely easy to tackle with the Ion Lander, and therefore won't get additional mentions. The Triton landing was the last act of the liquid fuel lander, which, like all other landings with this lander, was interesting and was accompanied by some kind of problem. First, I neglected the fact that Triton had an actual atmosphere and was taken by surprise when I slowed down at it. And second, I forgot to go into a command pod before switching seats, which meant that Jeb didn't have a flag. I fixed that by hacking the save file to give him one, as I really didn't want to reload a quick save and go there again. Having completed the landing on Triton, every single other landing in this mission would use the main ion lander and would therefore be extremely trivial. The one exception to this would be Venus, which would once again dwarf the challenge of anything else in this mission. I'll quickly speed through all these landings, trust me, it's really boring. You don't want to hear me say the same things 15 times in a row. After almost a year of procrastination, I got back to this and decided to finish the mission for good. This started by docking the Ion Tug back to the main ship before launching the final craft of the mission into an orbit at which point it could rendezvous with the main ship. After Jeb went over to the craft, I began the transfer to Venus, which would mirror what I did on the first one. At this point, going down into a low orbit after capturing was pretty much second nature, so I could do it very easily. From there, we once again left our return vehicle in a low orbit before deorbiting the craft, which was accomplished via a solid rocket booster mounted in reverse. The descent was devoid of any significant events, but it was extremely slow due to two factors. First, because I used the fragile braking ground rotors, I couldn't time warp at all, as doing so would risk a strike of a Kraken who would jump at the chance to tear my craft apart. Second, because I used RVE64K, my computer was absolutely struggling. Game time was running slower than real time at a factor of about 2 to 1. As a result, it took over an hour of actual time to descend from the edge of space all the way down to the surface. At 400 meters above the surface, I activated my parachutes. This was not to slow me down, as at this point I was already going at 12 meters per second, which the heat shield would have handled, but it was mostly to stabilize my orientation and to keep myself dead center on vertical. One interesting thing to note is that, despite launching over 2300 years apart, the two Venus landers both landed within 15 degrees of the equator and within 10 minutes of longitude with respect to each other. I'm fairly sure I could have gotten them to land exactly on top of one another, 
if I had been aware of this fact before the orbiting. With that, Jeb will now go out and plant the second to last flag of a mission before climbing into a very cramped seat and preparing for takeoff. The ascent was tricky, mostly due to the fact that I hadn't flown it in literal weeks and therefore didn't remember the contingency plans for the one big issue that plagued this craft, that being that it really liked to just move off of vertical at random, and the only thing you could do in that instance was to start descending and get it to settle back in. Luckily, the method I devised on the fly worked very well, and I kept pushing towards orbit. The craft ascended for a total of over 40 minutes before losing all of its vertical speed and an altitude of 55 kilometers at a pressure of 0.69 atmospheres, at which point I ditched the props and started the liquid fuel engines. The first ascent stage comprises four aerospikes with three radial ones feeding fuel into the middle core. This is where I encountered even more problems. First, when loading a quick save, a weird phantom torque would be applied to the craft, which caused me over 200 meters of delta V losses due to gravity. And another issue happened with deploying the fairing, which would cause Jeb to fall out of his seat, forcing me to delay the deployment until I was in space. I suspect both of these issues had something to do with weird interactions with the command seat, but I cannot be for certain. The final and worst bug that I had found was that the game just randomly froze when starting the second ascent stage, which consists of a rescaled Wolfhound engine. I somehow fixed that by delaying the separation and by deploying the fairing before firing the engine. Despite all these issues, I got into orbit with more fuel that one of my margins had planned for, so the rendezvous with the return craft, the transfer back to Earth, and the rendezvous with the final module were extremely uneventful. But that is where things get interesting. Like Macaulay before me, I planned to descend and land with this tiny little thing. Problem was that I had mounted the separate trunks extremely off-center at an angle, and that I neglected to put on any RCS at all, so I essentially had to do a hole-in-one from space. I managed to do so by seeing a maneuver and using trial and error with a lot of tries. To complete it, followed by pushing from Jeb for minor adjustments, and then altering the ship's orientation in the atmosphere for further small tweaks to my trajectory. All these factors combined to get me a landing just 4 meters off of my designated waypoint, which I would call a success. With that precise landing back at the launch pad, having taken 2,365 years of in-game time and over a year of real time, the mission is now complete. The whole mission took over 22 hours of playing time distributed over 5 different sittings resulting in over 56 gigabytes of footage, not even including all the time spent testing and editing. So if you really liked it, please give the video a thumbs up, it would help me out a lot. As you may know, I have successfully passed 100 subscribers, and I wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for sticking with me during the times I didn't upload anything. For all of us new here, don't expect my upload schedule to be consistent in any way. I upload when I have a video plan and when I feel like it. If you want to watch me do more missions like this, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss them, and write a comment if you have any suggestions or feedback. With that said, I hope to see you next time.